Cool. Hello, sorry, how's it going? Hi, are you, you okay? Yeah, all good. Good, good, good. Um, well, first of all, yes, um, it's, um, it's a good day in your career, isn't it? A contract extension with Bristol City. Um, how are you feeling? Yeah, delighted, delighted to get it done. Obviously, I'm um, um, buzzing to, to keep going with the club. Yeah, just tell me a bit about your, your time at Bristol City from, from your debut to, um, to the current day where you got the winner against Stoke on, on Wednesday night. Yeah, obviously it's it's been it's been quite a quite a journey for me. Um, obviously I had had um, a few loans before coming back and 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 playing here. So obviously up to up to yesterday, scoring the winner was was a big a big moment for me, and obviously my fiftieth uh, appearance as well. So buzz it. Yeah, I think it wasn't until QPR you started this season. Have, have you had to um, change your game this season since the arrival of, of Nigel Pearson? Um, yeah, a little bit. I think it's um, obviously adapting to to what to what um, each 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 manager wants wants from you and wants from the team. So um, yeah, I think that was a bit of a a bit of a, um, a stage where I had to kind of adapt certain things in my game. So yeah. Because on one hand, you've been at the club since 2017 and uh, we see you as a youngster, but you're now 23, aren't you? So you want to be playing for Bristol City every single week. Yeah, of course. Um, I think I think that's what you want from from the youngest age. So um, it's, it's obviously good to, to start to get that now. But as, as you said, it's, it's even more important as you start to get a bit older. And just talk to me a bit about Wednesday and first of all, the goals. Um, you're not afraid to shoot from distance. Um, this was on the end of a Thomas Callas long throw-in. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I, I was obviously just um, buzzing to obviously help the team get get the win and, and obviously score a goal. But um, yeah, it was, I think it was a it was a, it was a tough game. They're a good team, so um, yeah, really good to get the goal. How, however, it was whether it's from the edge of the box or in the box, it doesn't really matter to me. And what what a contrast to last season, which was all for being played behind closed doors. There was a really positive atmosphere I felt at the full time whistle. Where the um, the players and the supporters celebrated as one. Yeah, that's that's obviously it was it was it was missed a lot last season, um, have, having them behind us, and I think obviously it helped us even uh, see out that game because we had to do quite a lot of defending towards the end, and uh, honestly, just to hear them uh, roaring behind us and behind us um, made made it made it even better when we did see it through. And what's it like playing in the Bristol City midfield at the moment? After Joe was taken off, you had Hanoa, um, Ion, um, Alex Scott. Um, these are teenagers. Hanoa has <coughs> all right, just turned 20. But um, it's such a young midfield at the moment, isn't it? Yeah, I, I, I'm really enjoying it at the moment. I think um, it's good to obviously have that energy and, and that willing, willingness to want to want to wanna learn, want to play together. And I, I, I'm enjoying it. Um, Nigel, when asked about Alex Scott, said that earlier in the season, one day he this guy's going to play for England. Um, what, what's it like playing alongside him, a man of or a teenager full of such potential? Yeah, on, honestly, they're they're, they're both um, great great players with, with a lot of potential, and it's, it's it's a joy to to watch and to play to play alongside him and and also him. And I feel we have a lot of good young players coming up here. And um, have you been surprised by Eamon just bursting into the first team and um, taking the ball by the horns? He, he showed what he was made of against Blackburn, kicking the boot away, or seen <laughs> on the training ground. Is that what he's like week in, week out? Um, I, I actually wasn't too surprised with that one because obviously we've, we've trained with, with the young players before. We've, we've seen them play, so I was actually uh, not surprised by his how, how well he's, he's uh, taken to the first team football and obviously getting his first start. So... Um, yeah, just just buzzing that he's he's taking his opportunity. And this is probably looking more mid to long term, but the ambition for Bristol City under Nigel Pearson is to get into the Premier League. You're currently 18th in the table, but um, I think you're just three points off ninth place. What, what should City's ambitions be? Is it too is it important you don't look too far ahead, but just pull as far away from the bottom teams as possible and climb that league table? Yeah, like like I said, like I said after the game on Wednesday, I think it's um, taking every game as it comes. Um, Trying to trying to win every single game that we play and 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 taking it from there really. What do you expect from Sheffield United? I think there'll be a, maybe a bit of a bounce, bearing in mind that they've got a new manager. Yeah, they've they've obviously got a lot a lot of quality in their team, uh, a good team, and just come from the Premier League. So 
um, it will be a tough test, but we're, we're, we're going to be up for it. OK, Tariq, um, well done on the new deal, and we will catch you again soon. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Tariq, um, what, what, what aspects of, it, of, of your game have you had to change? Um, I think there's, I think there's, um, it's a good question. I feel it's quite, quite a lot to do with the physical aspect of the game, run, running more, you know, more, um, men, mentally defensive, your defensive duties, you know, being solid, being hard to beat sort of things. And, um, also going up and down, you know, up and down the field not just uh focusing on staying in one place you know kind of being able to go all around the pitch come back communication things like that i think have been um probably the the most important things for me to try and adapt in order to obviously uh do what the manager wants but i would say definitely physically running more i would say that would be a big part and um, a stupid question kind of how how have you done that have you have you put extra emphasis on fitness work and training yes it's it's been it's been um you know working working the gym you know to try and um improve power in order to like obviously spring off and try and press and try and um you know get into those positions quicker and just just um running and fitness in in training yeah and i think also it's it's, it's a mental side you know if, if you have that idea in your head you're you're more willing to do it and you're, you know, ready to do it. Because Nigel's talked about something's almost, there's been like a light bulb moment for you where you've kind of realised that you're kind of, your your natural, to, not, not so much your natural, but the talent you've developed um, needs more than just your talent. Um, what, what, is there anything, like, can you can you pinpoint when that happened? Like, when you realised, was, was there something that happened that made you think, well, hang about, I've got to, I've got to work on these things more closely? Um, I think I think it's just um, always wanting to, to learn. I don't think there was a natural switch. I think it's always been there. As soon as you hear it, you obviously want to learn. But I think sometimes it takes time for it to actually click, if that makes sense. So, like, you, you would have known or you've been told by the manager or who else that what you need to do is this, this and this. But I think sometimes it's, it doesn't always happen straight away. You don't always get it straight away. So sometimes it takes some time to adapt or get used to it and then kind of um, apply it, you know. And on the mental side of it, is that you watching how other midfielders play? Is, is that is that something you, you perhaps looked at doing? Yeah, I think I think it's, it's that. And then also, um, I think having it in your mind as you're playing yourself so you know if you have in your head i want to do this this and this i feel like it's easier to do in those scenarios so um yeah i think it's it's having the idea in your head yourself and also seeing it from other people and getting the information what, what uh, i mean the obvious question is there anyone in particular or people that you've kind of looked at for as a reference point yeah, obviously, um, the, the the gaffer brought in players like um, Andy King and uh, Jamo, who are, who, are, who are experienced characters. So I think um, learning from, but obviously you can learn from anyone. So learning from those two and learning from anyone who who does it well, whether they're young or older, I think helps. Is that externally, so sort of beyond the club? I mean, what I'm trying to get at is there is there certain players that you kind of watch um, beyond Bristol City that you almost like model, not, not model your game, you can take things from. Yeah, yeah, there's, there's, yeah, yeah, there's, there's obviously loads of, loads of players that play, you know, World Cup, Champions League, that you always want to, you know, model yourself around and watch and see how they're doing it to get to the top. So yeah, there's, there's definitely loads externally, but also internally, which is good too. Is there anyone in particular that you sort of hone in on this line? Yeah, I'm a, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of uh, Pat Vieira. He obviously played okay. played played before, but yeah, so he's probably one of my favourites. Fair play. And um, what sort of midfielder do you see yourself? Nigel said your talent can take you as far as, or sorry, your ability can take you as far as you want it to go. What sort of midfielder do you see yourself becoming? Um, I think it's just more of a box to box midfielder than than a holding midfielder. Maybe I think that's that's probably, and also why the. Um, running is also more important you know just kind of uh being able to get 
from one boss to the other without tiring too much and things like that. So I think that's probably um, more of the idea. Great stuff. Thanks, Tori. Cheers. Thank you. Hey, Tori. Hope you well. Hi. I just wanted to ask in regards to um, your development. Obviously, you've come from um, the under twenty threes kind of background development at Luton first. Um, what did you find most beneficial? Was it perhaps playing with same age grade players, or was that loans at, for example, at uh, Newport and Plymouth more worthwhile because you were playing them in nitty gritty kind of football? Um, I'd say for me personally, I'd say it was it was definitely loan football because obviously um, at your own age is. It's, I'd say it's easier, there's not as much pressure and, you know, there's no fans, there's no points, it's just more of a relaxed kind of environment. And I think throwing yourself into the, the men's football and everything's on the line, fans are, you know, shouting in the back, it's more of a realistic environment to learn in, I think. So I think for me that was definitely uh, more beneficial for my, for my um, progression. And then just you spoke briefly about Andy King and obviously Matty James coming in. They're players in your position um, that you've learned from. Um, you're, you're 23 now. Do you feel that perhaps um, the younger players like Ben Aroos and that coming in, that you're a player in the future, that you might be the player that puts your arm around them and gives them advice as well? Um, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd hope so. I'd hope so. Because obviously um, they're, they're great players as, as, as they are already. So hopefully they can carry on with that. But um, hopefully there's, there's some things that I can help them with, whether it's on or off the pitch, because obviously I've been through that experience already. So, yeah, I'd, I'd like to think so, yeah. And then just the last one as well. Uh, would you say perhaps midfield is probably the hardest position to get to in the team? There's a lot of options in there, and, <laughs> and sometimes there's had to be changes and forced changes, but it's probably one of the most difficult places to keep your play, uh, first team place down, perhaps. Um, yeah, I'd say there's obviously there's there's great competition in there, but I think that's that's even better for for the the midfield for in our team because you know the good competition means you have to work hard and train, you have to be on your game all the time to get in. So I think that's that's quite a good thing for us. Thank you, Terry. Cheers. Thank you.